Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about the, I believe 21, 21 books that I ended up reading in June. I just say 21 because I forgot one number I just counted and I don't feel like counting again and I think it's 21. <laughs> I read a bunch of novellas this month, I read, I reread a few things, so let's get Let's get started. The first book that I read is a novella. It's called Grimm by Lila Fay. This is a very short monster romance, probably my least favorite by Lila Fay. Lila Fay writes a bunch of monster romance novellas and this one was just okay for me. So essentially this girl is hiking and almost falls off a cliff and while she's in the process of falling, her Grimm comes towards her and basically says like, you can either die or be with me. And that's basically it. Uh, it was okay. It was very funny at times just laughing out loud because Lila Fay's books are hilarious. So I ended up giving this book a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Next is a reread for me. I reread Angie's Gladiator by Ruby Dixon, which is book number five in the Ice Home series. I was just in the mood to reread this one. It's one of my favorites. I love Angie. She is one of the women who crashes on Not Hoth on the Ice Home Camp Beach. Um, and she wakes up pregnant like seven eight months pregnant when she was not pregnant before she was abducted so what is going on and so you're trying to figure that out and during this one she's being uh courted by vortis who is one of the alien men who has crashed on the planet um and i love their romance they're both super cute and super sweet i love this one i gave it a four out of five stars i then decided to continue my read of the Horde Kings of Dakar series um, by Zoe Draven. I read Claimed by the Horde King. This one's about Nell and Serene, Saren, Siren. I don't know how to say his name. I'm so sorry. Um, but this is another human woman Dakar male pairing. I think they're all like that. I don't know. He's a Horde King. Nell is essentially illegally hunting in the woods. And that's a big no-no if you're a human on this planet. And so he basically kidnaps her and um brings her to his uh land instead of killing her because he feels like he can't kill her which is bizarre to him he's always like i've been able to do this why can't i kill this one woman and um turns out there might be some kind of mating involved <laughs> and so he does punish her at first before he decides not to kill her he has to whip her in order to punish her for what she did and the whole rest of the book he grovels for it so if you like a groveling romance, this is one to pick up. I really loved Nell as a character in here. Um, I just think like the second half of the book wasn't necessarily my favorite thing ever um, compared to book one. I loved book one so much. So this one's just going to be like a four star for me. There's a trigger warning in here for whipping, obviously, like I just mentioned. And then tropes, you have alien romance. There's amazing period representation. So I love romances where like the, the author is not afraid to like talk about women's periods because they happen. And what do you do when an alien planet when you get a period and funnily enough some of my favorite romance books that talk about periods are alien romances <laughs> they're not even contemporary ones like contemporary romances you never see them talk about periods alien romances you do i love seeing it um there's amazing caretaking scene there are barbarians in here there's a scar character both of them are um because of the scars on their backs both of them have been whipped on their backs um groveling it's on kindle unlimited and there is a warrior woman she's definitely a warrior woman Nell is so i really enjoyed this one i gave it a four to five stars i then read daisy's decision by ruby dixon which is book number 16 in the ice home series and i'm not gonna be mentioning any of my thoughts on here i have a whole entire dedicated reading vlog for this book down below if you would like to check it out um there is spoilers so if you're wanting to know what i thought about it it'll be linked down below and yeah, you can know my thoughts by watching that. I then read my first Elisa Braden. I read The Making of a Highlander, which is her first book in the Midnight in Scotland series. This is the romance between Annie and John. So Annie is a woman from the Scottish Highlands um, and her village has basically labeled her as Mad Annie. She's mad, she's crazy. Little do they know though, she's not crazy. She just can see ghosts, like she can see um, like her best friend is this little boy ghost who's been her best friend for forever, basically. But then one day this ghost goes missing. Her best friend goes missing and she can't find him. And she realizes, oh, sorry, my earring is caught in my hair. <laughs> she realizes the only way to get him back by some means is to marry an English Lord. She assumes that based on certain things in the book that he will reincarnate himself into 
her future son um, with a lord. And um, it makes sense when you read the book. I know that sounds crazy. <laughs> anyway, uh, she's not the Lord marrying type though. She's like the biggest tomboy you can think of during this time period. She does not wear dresses. She only wears pants. She curses. She like, <laughs> it's not lady like marriage material whatsoever she says. And so she goes to the only English man that she knows, which is John who owns like a plot of land in the Highlands. He's trying to fix up. She's like, hey, you're from England. Your sisters are ladies. Can you like help me become one so I can marry a Lord? And so they go through um, helping each other in different situations. He helps her with like lady lessons and then she helps him do like certain Scottish um, traditions in order to win something in the Highland Games. And then the two of them spend more time together and they obviously fall in love. Um, but Annie is like in this predicament because she wants her best friend back, but she is falling in love with John and John claims that he's not a Lord. Um, and so how can she have both? She has to let someone go. And that's really sad. That broke my heart. I just loved these two characters. Their bantering was fantastic, fantastic banter in here. I love the slow progression of seeing them fall in love. You sometimes don't get that in romance books. Sometimes it's just like a switch lift and that's not my favorite ones. Like I love seeing the slow progression into love. Um, and so you really got to see that in here. Um, the only thing I wish there was more like information on was like the magical aspect of the book like the ghost aspect like the magical aspect i didn't really get a lot of information around that you know i have a lot of questions following it that i feel like were unanswered so trigger warnings in here for attempted kidnapping drugging death blood and then tropes you have baking annie in here is a great baker she apparently makes an amazing loaf of bread and other sweet treats. Um, there's great banter. The hero falls first in this one. Um, it's a historical romance and it is a part of a bigger historical romance series. I ended up giving this one a four to five stars. Another historical that I read was Accidentally Compromising the Duke by Stacey Reed, which is her first book in the Wedded by Scandal series. So this is the romance between Adeline and Edmund. Adeline is trying to escape this forced engagement. Her father has basically threatened her to marry this man and she doesn't want to do it because she knows he's an evil man like the guy she's gonna marry and so the only way she can think of to escape this is if she gets ruined and gets put in a compromising position with a man that she knows will be a good husband to her so she goes through this elaborate plan with her best friend they set it all up to go into a man's room at night and have someone come upon them however she ends up going into the wrong room not the man that she is friends with that she knows could be a very gentle and kind husband. She walks into the room of the elusive mad duke and then they get in a compromising position and they have to get married. And Edmund is thrilled about this. He's like, I came to London to find a mother for my children because their mother died a few years ago. And so he's like, I I want them to have a mother and this is perfect situation for me to finally just get them a mom. And so yeah, there's gonna be no feelings involved this will just be my wife and my children's mom, you know? Um, there's gonna be no feelings involved. What happens when that's a part of the summary? There's always gonna be feelings involved. <laughs> um, and so yeah, the two of them spend time together and they obviously fall in love, even though it's very awkward at first and they don't know how to treat each other or talk to each other. The meat cute in here was absolutely priceless. I loved that about her accidentally walking into the wrong room loved that and then um their growth together was really great in their different aspects of their growth um the hero specifically like he does not want to fall in love because of the heartbreak he went through with his first wife and so that's why he doesn't want to marry someone he feels like he could love and i loved um edmund's daughters like his growth with them because he's kind of like put them at a distance because he loves them but he doesn't want to lose them and experience heartbreak again um and so his growth to being there for them all over again was really beautiful to see. I love kids in books when they're done well. And this one was done well. Can't wait to read the next books in the series. I've heard they're even better. So I'm really excited. Tropes in here, you have damaged hero. There's a duke, grief, the hero really grieves his wife and these, he actually lost a son too. Um, Cause I believe she died during childbirth and the son did as well, unfortunately. Um, there's groveling in here, the hero grovels. It's a historical romance. Um, there's marriage of convenience in here. Um, it's a 
a Roman story about a married couple. They get married towards the beginning. Um, there's an amazing meet cute moment. Um, the hero is reluctant to love. There's a ruined heroine, it's a single dad romance, and it is a widower too. I ended up giving this book a four out of five stars. I then did my reread of Air of Fire by Sarah J Maas for the SJM along. I was really behind last month um, with <laughs> the SJM along and I'm still behind. Uh, they literally had the Queen of Shadows live show uh, a couple days ago, two days ago, and I missed it. I, I, I have not finished Queen of Shadows yet. So um, I need to get on that because the next book that we read in um, July is According to Miss and Fury. And that's like my favorite. So I gotta read that. But this is book three. <laughs> I don't know why I just forgot. Book three in the Throne of Glass series. I'm not gonna talk about it all that much or literally at all because like anything I say could be a spoiler. But book three, I love this one. Five stars. Fantastic. This series is amazing. I love it. I then read Seatmate by Cara Bastone. This is an Audible Plus um, novella that I listened to. I've been loving this series. This is her Love Line series. Um, all about couples like meeting for the first time and like meet cute moments. So these two end up meeting on a bus going to New York City. Their names are Gwen and Sam. They end up sitting right next to each other and they go through the day um, going on little adventures to try and get to New York City to a certain time, at a certain time, because someone has like a very important meeting. Um, this was super cute. The audiobook was fantastic. It has a whole cast of narrators, as well as ambiance noise, background noise, sound effects, everything. It's amazing. For tropes in this one, you have a big city romance that takes place in New York. Um, it's very funny. There's great banter and um, there's no steam in these. So if you're not a steam kind of person, Pick, pick up the Love Line series by Cara Bastone. I ended up giving this book a four to five stars. I then read two Ruby Dixon, like very, very, very short stories. Like they're literally like 10, five pages each. So first is book number 20.5 in the Ice Planet Barbarian series called Josie's Wish. So this takes place on, during Christmas time on the planet and it centers around Josie and Hayden and you follow them and their little family throughout the day. And uh, Josie has a specific wish for Christmas and she hopes that it comes true. It's very cute. I loved this one. It's probably one of my favorite, very short novellas that Ruby's written, so I gave it five stars. It was really good. And then another uh, novella she wrote was A Gift. There's no cover for this, um, but this is book number 17.2 in the series. And um, it's a short story that takes place after The Barbarian Before Christmas, which is one that I have. Um, and it's all about Claire, uh, Georgie and Asha wanting to, wanting like Ellie to feel welcome in the tribe so they end up making her some gifts and I love Ellie like I love her she's like my favorite heroine in the whole entire series and so um I loved reading about them like making her feel welcome making her all these gifts it was super cute super sweet so I really enjoyed this one I gave it a four to five stars I then read The Taming of a Highlander by Elisa Braden this is one of my favorite books of the year I loved this this is the second book too the other Elisa Braden that I just talked about so this one is about Kate and Broderick um you read about Broderick in book one where he gets um wrongly imprisoned and beaten basically to a pulp almost dies he's so beaten his eyes taken out of his head like he has scars all over his body he is also a giant of a man he's huge and so kate is the sister to the guy from book one and project is the stepbrother to the heroine from book one and so they've never met before but he comes like he gets like taken out of prison um because they realize he's like innocent and then kate ends up like walking in the woods one night and she ends up witnessing Broderick attacking somebody, the person who put him in prison in the first place. And she is like immediately scared of him. Cause like when you come across this scarred giant of a man in the rain, in the woods, in the dark, being a man to a pulp, you're obviously going to be terrified. So she sees him, so she sees him and immediately is scared, runs away all the way back home. And so she doesn't want to be used against him for like the police trying to incriminate him uh, because they're trying to find a man he was beating up. And so they think that Broderick is to blame and that she knows what happened. And so she's like, well, the only way that I can't lie and like tell people because I'm a horrible liar and they know that I'm gonna lie. So the only way we can be safe in this situation is if I marry Broderick. And so that's exactly what they do. Broderick does not want a wife. And so um, he has no idea what he's getting into with this quirky, funny woman. Like she's so funny, I love her. And then once he gets to know her, he obviously becomes like entranced and 
falls in love with her. I love this one so much. Roderick goes through a lot of stuff in here um, and in the previous book. So please like read book one before you get to this one. Uh, but his redemption in here was amazing. Once Roderick realizes that he's like worthy of love, no matter what he looks like or what he's been through, it is so good. I'm sure going in here for kidnapping, beating, and near-death experience tropes. You have a caretaking scene. Kate gets hurt at one point. Um, there's a damaged hero. There's a height difference. It's a Highlander romance, a historical romance, a marriage of convenience. It's about a married couple. Um, there's near-death experience of Broderick being in jail. He almost dies. Um, there's a possessive hero, a quirky heroine, and a scarred character who is Broderick. I love this one. I gave it a five out of five stars. I then read a uh, dad bod wingman by Carla Doyle. I don't know why I had this on my Kindle Unlimited, but I just did. And I just picked it up on a whim. And this was so sweet. If you love like Cassie Mint novellas, but you want it even sweeter, I think this is the author to pick up. I've only read this one book by her, but like that's what it gave me the vibe of, like a Cassie Mint novella, but sweeter, but it's still hot, still very hot. So Jensen and Bailey are like childhood friends and they've also always been pining over one another, um, but for various reasons, they think that they can't give with the other person. Um, and so Jensen finally moves back to his hometown and starts uh, running into Bailey. And then he finally gets enough courage to like ask her out and she is thrilled. He's really surprised that Bailey like feels the same way about him. And it is so stinking cute. This, this is very hot though. Don't, don't, it's cute, but it's also hot. Like I really want to make a rec video about cute romances, but they're also very hot because I love those. Those are my favorites. Tropes in here, you have a bigger hero, it's childhood crush, cinnamon roll hero, cute but hot. Yes, uh, dyslexia representation. The heroine has dyslexia. Um, it's friends to lovers. There's a height difference. It's on Kindle Unlimited. There is longing. It's a novella and there is a sweet hero. I gave this book a four out of five stars. Next, I read Guarding Temptation by Talia Hibbert. Um, this book I've been wanting to read for quite a long time to read all of Talia Hibbert's backlist. I'm so glad that I ended up finally reading it. Um, so basically our heroine in here, um, she is receiving some like death threats and so she goes to her brother's best friend to help protect her um, to figure out what's going on and everything um, and they are both hardcore pining for each other but they haven't spoken in a couple months because they had a failed hookup where one of the people hurt the other person's feelings quite a lot and so they haven't spoken in months so she kind of has to bite her tongue and go in and ask for help even though she doesn't want to because this man hurt her feelings um but little do they know that both of them just want to be with the other person so 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 badly so it's about him protecting her while also trying to resist her at the same time but he finds out he can't resist her it's really cute i really enjoyed this one for tropes in here you have best friend sibling brother's best friend forced proximity longing possessive and it is a novella i gave this book a four to five stars next i read tempting ozed ozed <laughs> by Victoria Abilene, the fourth book in the Calcanian series. This is an alien romance series that I have been liking. Unfortunately, this is one that I didn't enjoy as much as the other books. Of the human woman, I think her name's Alejandra. She, um, you read about her in a previous book. She ends up getting lost in the alien woods and the hero, Ozen, ends up rescuing her and they have to go to this city and pretend to be together in this city to protect each other. And it was just, not entertaining to me like it was boring <laughs> it was just so boring i was bored and i don't remember anything else from it i gave it a three out of five stars i then read romancing mr bridgerton by julia quinn it's book number four in the bridgerton series it's going to be my bridgerton vlog that i come out with at some point um when i finish the series and yeah you can figure out my thoughts whenever that vlog comes out this is colin and penelope's story i can't wait to watch their season on Netflix. I then read a novella because of Rachel from Rachel Reads and Sings. She was talking about the Bombshell Bride series by Cassie Mint, the first book being Woke Up Wed. And I was like, I gotta read this series. I love Cassie Mint. And so the first one is Woke Up Wed. It's about Effie and Guy. So Effie is Guy's personal assistant and they end up going to Vegas to do this business deal. And they end up getting accidentally drugged. And um, they wake up one morning and they are married and they don't know how it happened and they have to retrace their steps from the last night to figure out how they got married um and to try and get a divorce but then once they figure out what's going on they might not 
want a divorce actually and they try and maybe convince the other person that they don't want to be divorced from each other both of them had been pining over each other for quite a long time so it was super cute how they finally like got to be together you know i can't wait to read more books in the series because i think like more of them i feel like the other ones some of the other ones like are more my vibe i gave this one just four stars um so I can't wait to read more of the other ones too because I know Rachel loves the other ones as well. For tropes, you have Big City. It takes place in Vegas. There's great banter. It's on Kindle Unlimited. There's longing. Um, it deals with a married couple. It's a workplace romance. It's a novella and there is a wedding. And then I read all of the novellas a part of The Assassin's Blade by Sarah G. Mass. I'm not somebody who can read them individually. Um, I have to like binge them all at once like a regular book. So that's what I did. I read all of them. Um, I think I gave all of them five stars except for the first two. So the Assassin and the Pirate Lord and the Assassin and the Healer I gave four stars just because like they weren't like my favorite thing ever. And so I'm just gonna give this book in general like a 4.5 rating. I love anything to do with Selena and this world. So I love these um, and I can't wait to dive into Queen of Shadows because I feel like this group of novellas really sets up Queen of Shadows. That's why you should read all of these before Queen of Shadows because it really sets that up. And so I'm really excited to dive into Queen of Shadows soon, but I love this. I'm gonna grade it a 4.5 on Goodreads. And the last book that I read in June was a novella with a very long title, so bear with me. It's a new release from M.L. Eliza. It's called How My Boring Life Was Completely Derailed and I Was Absolutely Railed by Two Big Blue Alien Dudes from Outer Space. So I follow ML Eliza on Instagram and I saw that she um, released a new book and I was like, okay, I gotta pick it up because I've read a few of hers already. Um, and so I was like, okay, I'll just pick it up. It's an alien romance, let's do it. And it was very funny, but very hot. So this one's about um, a human woman being like getting abducted from earth and um, her hooking up with the alien king who abducted her and his bodyguard. And so it's MMF because the two guys have been like in this relationship for quite a while. Um, this was super hot, super fun. And um, I wish that this was a full length book. I feel like it would have been an amazing full length book, but it was very short. It was like 40, 50 pages long. For tropes, you have uh, a couple that has more than three people. It's an alien romance. There's a bodyguard, height difference, hidden identity. It's on Kindle Unlimited. There's a language barrier between the bodyguard and the human woman so they can't really communicate but man can they communicate with their bodies because oh my gosh um, <laughs> it's lgbtq plus and it has plus size rep and it is a novella i really enjoy this one i gave it a four out of five stars but anyways there you have it those are the books that i ended up reading in the month of june it's definitely one of the months that i've read like the least amount of books in 2022 so far but i had a lot going on and i'm proud of the books that i ended up reading because I did read a bunch of amazing ones. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. I'd love to know and if you don't feel like commenting any of those things you can leave me a um, blue heart emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways thank y'all so so much for watching. I will see y'all soon on my next one. Bye y'all! Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day.